Hi, I'm Larry Dignan from Constellation Insights, and here we're here with Nir Mernerby. He's a CEO of Classic. Hi, Nir, how are you doing? Great, Larry. Thank you very much for having me. So I've been following quantum computing for a few years now, and you know it's kind of taken a few interesting turns in that we've talked about um, quantum supremacy, and and now it seems like it's evolved into more like what can quantum computing today do. Um, I guess for starters, you know, explain what Classic does and and kind of give me the state of the state of where quantum computing sits today. Sure. So Classic is a, a quantum computing software company. We develop the operating system and compiler for a, any quantum computer. And to connect it to to the second question, so you know, quantum computing isn't uh, isn't new. It was envisioned since the eighties and the big question wasn't, you know, why develop quantum computers? It was when or even if. And if we want to like summarize the, the revolution in quantum computing in the last few years is the, the shift of, of the question, right? The if turned into when and the when into relatively soon. And, you know, in order to realize this new era in computing, we need hardware and we need software. Uh, while many good companies are focused on developing the hardware. It's too early to bet on the winner, but we see amazing progress by many of them. Uh, we established this company four years ago as there isn't any quantum software stack. No one can really program quantum computers. And it was quite clear that it will be uh, essential into the development of this uh, new field. So this is what we do. We are a product company. The product is well adapted among uh, large enterprises, academic institutions, and um, this is what we focus on. And and you work across the various quantum systems like Quantinium, uh, IBM, etc. I guess how how does that how does that work out across the hardware platforms? Yeah, great question. So so the answer is yes. The the the, the compiler and the OS are completely hardware agnostic, both in the I would say superficial way of we are integrated with all of the available quantum computers, uh, many dozens, uh, but also from the deep way, the technology that we bring into this um, evolving software stack is the design automation, right? With Classic, you don't need to specify the quantum program at the gate level, you specify a high level functional model that is focused on, on what you want to achieve on the application, on the algorithm, and then our cross compiler is taking the high level functional model and the hardware constraints. Constraints could be anything, the qubit count, the noise model, the connectivity and so on. And it synthesizes a gate level circuit that is optimized for a specific, specific machine. So from one high level functional model, you can get many different uh, you know, uh, uh, programs, uh, uh, circuits that are adapted and optimized for very different machines. So how does your software um, either rely on error uh, error corrections, or I guess, how does that impact the software stack? Because I know everybody's sort of chasing this error correction thing um, across platforms. I mean, I saw something, <clears throat> I mean, just recently from Quantinium, Quantinium uh, and there's a lot of papers flying around about error correction. And how important is that into you know, not only just adopting quantum systems, but also, you know, how does that impact the software layer? Yeah, great question. So, so eventually the software layer enables quantum software engineers in any industry, you know, of course, any uh, use case to describe what they want to achieve with the quantum computer, to describe the algorithm. And, uh, you know, the software stack is automating the, the rest of the process. Now, in order to realize some of the, uh, you know, uh, killer applications and, and most more sophisticated algorithms, uh, quantum algorithms, yes, you need a fault tolerant machine and you need error correction. And therefore, you know, this type of developments uh, among hardware providers are very exciting. And from the software perspective, so it has two main effects. First, you know, these uh, fault tolerant algorithms, the more complex algorithms, you know, the HHL and QPE and the uh, Ensure and Grover are 
you know, becoming more relevant for uh, end users. And these are much more complex algorithms with millions and tens of millions of gates. So definitely you, you need design automation tools in order to, to, to develop them. You cannot do that at the gate level. So this is one key aspect. And the second key aspect, aspect which is also interesting, is embedding the error correction schemes in advance of the compilation. So in the first place, you can get a quantum circuit with the error correction uh, code on top of it as part of the compilation flow. Okay. Um, in terms of kind of quantum interplaying with supercomputing, and you know, I have heard the term hybrid quantum computing a lot more. Um, how do you see that playing out in terms of you know supercomputing? and quantum and, and how that all plays together. Yeah. So first, most quantum algorithms are hybrid. It means that, you know, the, there is the quantum acceleration done on a quantum computer, but, you know, parts of the algorithm are done on a classical computer, you know, when this is a, a this is a, a definitely a hybrid uh, workflow. So we will need classical computers as part of the quantum workflow by all means. On top of that, we see many of the HPC providers trying to embed quantum computers uh, within the HPC stack, both from the hardware perspective. We see more and more HPC centers buying quantum computers and you know trying to integrate them within the HPC stack. And also the, you know, from the software perspective, and this is something that we are very much involved in, we see, um, you know, development environments that are dedicated for supercomputing, like the HP Cray development environment that, uh, you know, so, so we work closely with HP on integrating classic as backend to HP Cray programming environment. So we allow by that the Cray developers to, to access quantum computers as well. A similar story with NVIDIA CUDA Quantum. So definitely it's going to be uh, integrated, probably in the long term, but definitely in the, in the near term. And that, uh, you know, this tight software integration is, is very important. Okay. And, and I guess that brings me, uh, Classic recently announced a uh, partnership with NVIDIA. Um, I mean, I assume that's part of the hybrid supercomputing sort of play. Um, I guess what's what's NVIDIA's role in the quantum computing space? Yeah, so NVIDIA is uh, becoming a more and more prominent player in, in the quantum space. It started like, I guess, two and a half years ago with uh, mainly with simulations, uh, simulating quantum programs uh, on, with GPUs that are very much suitable for, for these kind of simulations. and. Simulations are essential for the development of uh, quantum applications, quantum algorithm. And that was um, a very natural partnership because Classic enables users to compile the most advanced quantum circuits. And uh, we are integrated with these GPUs and we enable users to simulate them. So that was a, a very, um, I would say, a natural fit, also the basis to a previous work published uh, with Rolls-Royce uh, and NVIDIA uh, as well. That was uh, a year ago, the simulation of the largest quantum circuit to date with 10 million uh, gates. And uh, recent, more recently, like a year, year and a half ago, NVIDIA launched a CUDA Q, CUDA Quantum, mm -hmm. which is uh, the quantum uh, version of, of CUDA to some extent. And this is a very advanced uh, quantum software framework that we work with NVIDIA to, to integrate a uh, classic quiz and, uh, and that, that is the basis to, to other uh, uh, activities as well. So it's, it's quite, I would say, a natural uh, partnership uh, at the software layer uh, of the quantum stack. Do you, do you think it'll become a case where, you know, QPUs and GPUs kind of ride next to each other or is that already happening? Yes, I, I, I think that, you know, this is part of, of the hybrid uh, uh, aspect, just like, you know, QPU, sorry, uh, CPU and GPU are working together as part of the data center or the HPC stuff, uh, or even our laptop. Uh, in, in some cases, it's likely to be the case, you know, uh, QPU, CPU, GPU, uh, you know, uh, one by the other as part of, of a bigger stack. 
I do think that there are going to be cases that a QPU will also work standalone, but I think hybrid is uh, the name of the game. Uh, so, so this type of you know hybrid uh, quantum software stacks will be essential. And and what does I guess classic? Uh, how familiar is it to developers in terms of you know programming languages and stuff like that? Like what do you what what can you use that you know today that a developer would know today? that extends into, you know, your platform? Yeah, great question. So, so, so classic is, um, uh, is quite unique in the quantum stack because this is the only platform that allows a uh, domain experts who are not quantum experts to develop quantum applications. And this is because the level of abstraction is very high. You don't need to specify gate level operations, which is by the way, something that also quantum experts cannot do, you know, beyond, I, I don't know, 20, 40 qubits. But also for the main experts who are experienced with Python, for example, so we allow much higher level of abstraction and many of our customers, both enterprise and, and other type of customers, so they uh, work with Classic because they want to embed domain experts, software developers, machine learning experts into quantum without, uh, you know, uh, having a quantum information uh, scientist. Okay. Um speaking of you know use cases and things like that uh you've recently announced a deal with bmw and then a few months back you um, said you were partnering with city um i guess walk me through those use cases and kind of what you hope to explore with those companies sure so uh, I, I would say that generally uh, classics enterprise customers are all focused on similar goals. They establish their quantum team uh, these days, by the way, some of them uh, much earlier, a few years ago, because they understand it will take time, many years, to prepare for uh, quantum computing properly, to develop the application, to develop the IP, to develop the proficiency within the organization. And especially with, with I would say that these two cases are, are quite different in nature. And this is, uh, this is what makes it uh, interesting because uh, Citibank, for example, the, the, the group we worked with, they had no quantum experts. They had you know, machine learning uh, developers who onboarded into quantum with classics. So they specifically developed um, a quantum algorithm for portfolio optimization with very good results. That was uh, in collaboration with uh, Amazon. And the BMW team, on the other hand, this is one of the most advanced teams uh, globally. They have quantum experts and they use the classic platform in order to develop um, probably the most complex quantum algorithm someone has ever ever been able to, to, to practically develop, to compile, to, to run. Um, so that was very impressive. So I, I think, you know, seeing this, to, I would say, uh, not not necessarily extremes, but two different type of, you know, uh, quantum software developers. This is kind of symbolizes what we try to do. We try to build the software stack that will fit all eventually. And sorry, I, I didn't answer about the, the BMW use case. So the BMW use case was um, a cooling system uh, optimization within the car, that quantum algorithm is a combination of uh, the QAOA algorithm with the HHL algorithm. Uh, quite interesting use case. So as far as the software stack goes, uh, what's on your roadmap? What do you think is missing? I guess if you were to hit fast forward on, on what a quantum software stack should look like, um, you know what would what would it look like? What 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 needs work? I guess going forward. I think what we are doing for the past few years is taking the best practices and technologies from the classical stack that was developed for the past sixty years, and we bring them into the quantum stack. So we eventually we want them to be almost equivalent, right? Abstract development, uh, high performance result. Um, you know, uh, being hardware agnostic. So, you know, all of these uh, um, uh, pillars are already in, in, in the platform. You know, this is what, what makes it um, uh, advanced. 
but of course there is so much work to be done for, for one example these days we work on also in a way to model quantum circuits uh, uh, in a in a visual way like uh, in, to some extent like you know you do with uh, tools like matlab or or simlink so you can you know model the quantum program um, uh, in, in a visual way with with blocks and then the compiler takes this uh, this diagram and compiles a, a quantum assembly out of it so this is uh, one avenue forward but mainly more abstract development python embedded uh, more integrations uh, across the stack uh, as front end as back end and and better results you know the, the in order to bring useful quantum computing we need the hardware to progress and the software to enable extracting more uh, you know more value out with less quantum resources so this is you know a, a two ways of development and the, the quantum software stack should um should support uh, you know the, the software aspect obviously um what's the role of partnerships as you build out the stack so we partner with um, basically almost any type of, of you know quantum users or suppliers from the supplier's perspective. So of course, with hardware providers, we act as a operating system for these machines. We go to market together. We have joint customers and so on. With the cloud providers, of course, you know, we are integrated with uh, all available quantum clouds, uh, Microsoft Azure Quantum, Amazon Bracket, GCP Quantum, IBM, of course. So, so it's very complementary because our users use the platform and run, you know, quantum programs via these clouds uh, on, on quantum hardware. And we partner with the uh, HPC providers, as I mentioned, uh, like NVIDIA, like uh, HPE and some others. And with other software vendors, I think one of the beautiful partnerships we recently um, shared was the Wolfram partnership. You know, embedding Classic as backend to the Wolfram Mathematica language, allowing the Wolfram Mathematica users to develop more complex quantum software. So, you know, we try to power with our engine any quantum software stack, any hardware. So these are the type of partnerships we see valuable for our customers. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Laurie. Thank you.